You heard of design patterns before, but you always thought they do not apply to your project, so you never used them properly. I did the same thing for years. I would watch some tutorial and understand pretty much everything, but then I would just go back to the good old if else because that's what I was comfortable with. I was not comfortable, however, with changing my code and any problems that would occur because of those changes. And I would loudly blame it on the clients and project managers as they do not know what they want. Because, you know, I was a senior developer with multiple years of experience and who knew programming better than me, right? But what are design patterns basically? Well, their definition is a reusable solutions to common problems in object-oriented programming, right? So the problems that people have experienced already before and solve somehow. Almost like preparing some food, right? For example, how to make your classes independent from each other or independent from your entire framework, your entire application, so that you can use them in different places, in different projects. So instead of our objects making new objects inside themselves and thus creating necessary dependency, we can use a dependency injection pattern, which allows for injecting dependencies that our class will then use. Or say our application has two shipping services and we need to add a third one. If we just add another if-else, we are going to add up with a big mess very soon because we just cannot maintain a code like that. And you know what it's going to look like with a bunch of uh, conditions all over the place. This is where we could use the adapter pattern to adapt some new service to our existing code base, right? Or one more example, we might have a complex way of doing some repeatable functionality, say like resizing images, for example. And that operation might have 5 or 20 codes offline each time we are resizing, storing multiple versions, and it can involve multiple libraries. There we can use the facade design pattern and write that functionality in one single line, right? And the list goes on and on, and there are a lot of design patterns existing. Some of them are more popular than others, and uh, some play very well in a web space, while some are not that relevant. And people compare them to a food recipe, but unlike a food recipe, design patterns are not the exact code that you should follow step by step. They're more like a take two eggs per person, add some oil in the pan, and use the medium heat type of recipe. I mean, how difficult can it be to steak eggs, right? And since they are not exact lines of code that you can just copy and paste, that is what makes them uh, really tricky to master and to use in real life, especially in the beginning. At least that was the case for me personally. I would watch some example of design patterns and I would understand it all. Some examples of pizzas and cars and animals, which inherits the duck and duck inherits the animals and... And I would understand it all and it would make perfect sense when they are explained like that. But when I would sit back with my project, I would just continue with the same good old if-else as I have always been doing. And that has served me very well. Because that makes sense to me. I don't ever work with pizzas and ducks and I have real projects and real deadlines to work with. The only problem was that my classes would grow beyond my control and changing any functionality in a code becomes a, well, a very stressful thing to do. That's what got my suspicious about if a bunch of if-elses are the solution to every problem. And again, this, I think this is the main reason why design patterns are difficult to learn. You either know to use them and you use them or you think of them as something that someone on the internet is using and explaining in maybe some huge company or some huge project. But that's just not the case. Every company was once a small company and even the biggest projects started with a single hello world line. And another reason I believe they are difficult is because they are more about high level design and architecture. And we programmers, me personally, especially us who are learning programming trade on our own, we think in terms of code. We open the editor and we start writing, we start building. And it's very hard to think of architecture and design patterns of our classes when we are sitting and uh, changing the code in the editor itself. It can be done, of course, it just requires a bit of experience and practice. And practicing them is the impossible thing due to the catch-22. In order to understand them, you need to use them. But in order to use them, you need to understand them. So for years, I never actually used design patterns in real life and uh, everything was fine. Except that way too often I was frustrated when clients would change requirements. And I would just wish to start and from the scratch and delete everything. Because changing any class in my projects would cause too much bugs, too much connection with other classes, 
So every change was a real pain in the brain. So why should we learn design patterns? Well, as mentioned, any change to the project would stress me a lot and it would take more and more time to implement any change as the project was growing and it's impossible to define and predict every functionality. So the code was getting more and more difficult to test and quite often I would consider just dropping everything and starting from the scratch. That sounded like an easier way out. And of course, as any good programmer with several years of experience, I think I even called myself a senior then. I would of course blame it on bad documentation and the clients who had no idea what they wanted and project managers who would change requirements in the middle of the project. But the truth was, I never had control over my code. It would just grow out of my control, functionality would get dupli duplicated and the classes would be so dependent on, the, on each other that even a small change would require change of several classes and objects and screens and pages etc. And it would become very difficult, if not impossible, for me to follow the communication of data between objects. Bugs would just appear on pretty much every change and they would appear in some totally unexpected places because the code is being so interconnected. So if I would to actually start from scratch, most likely I would end up in the same mess again. So at one point I got sick and tired of being sick and tired and I started researching a better way of doing things. Something was just missing there. So I started to really focus on improving the code base, reduce problems, reduce messy code. I started learning about solid and dry principles, automated testing, and I really sat down to understand design patterns and how to use them in my projects. I would isolate my problems as I encountered them if they happened multiple times and I would start to look for a solution. And very soon, I would say within a year of serious learning, I felt that I got the control back over the code, over the things that I was making. Design patterns started appearing more and more, even my, in my smaller projects, and they would somehow be a natural part of working rather than some uh, fancy magic that I saw online once. I started recognizing bad and messy code, and my code, I believe, became more robust and easier to test and change, and I would generally achieve more functionality which, with much less code. Also, my communication about problems and solutions improved, both with other programmers, but also with people who are not that tech-savvy. And I was able to help my colleagues in addition with some difficult things. I could even Google better because I knew what the problem is, how to describe it. And quite often, I could just go around my problem with some maybe simpler solution rather than trying to solve it, to solve it the hard way because I knew the advantages and disadvantages of different solutions that were appearing. And my actual programming process changed over time, so I would spend less and less time in front of the editor and maybe more time planning things, encountering and fixing problems way before I would open the editor. I could basically separate programming from the coding. And at one point that reflected on my resume or and my status, if you will, among other programmers. So, for example, when some of my colleagues would change company, they would quite often offer me a chance to change the company and work with them. And that got me a lot of interesting job opportunities and, of course, even better compensation for my work. And also my knowledge and understanding of programming would now easily span uh, out of the PHP that I was so comfortable with for years, so that I could work on other projects with other programming la uh, languages relatively quickly because I would recognize the concept. I would follow that data. For example, it took me uh, maybe a few months to get comfortable with TypeScript or even a Java to a certain level. So I was able to work on different projects and different tasks and I would be happily dropped into the big boys club with very experienced programmers who were doing some very difficult things and I would be pretty soon be able to contribute to the project and even discuss some very complex things on a, for me, a completely new level. Because all those principles and design patterns work the same in majority of object-oriented languages. And once you know them, you can easily switch programming language and still understand how things actually work. But even more importantly, why they work that exact way, that certain way. And if you look around, majority of open source projects require a good robust solutions and follow most, if not all, the popular object-oriented principles and design patterns. And if you'd like to contribute some of them to fill in in your resume that you that you are a contributor on that, 
You will need to know this concept if you want your code to be accepted. Most importantly to me, to be honest, is that I would no longer stress if I needed to change my code. I know when my code is robust and flexible, so that any change will just give me an opportunity to improve my code even further, because I just have full control over everything that I'm doing. So how can you learn design patterns properly? Well, as anything else, you practice. Watching is understanding, and doing is actually learning. But when you're just starting with them, uh, make sure you don't expect to master them immediately just because you've read recipe online, like I tried with eggs. You can follow the recipe and still fail, because the devil is in the details. So you just need more experience and more patience. And at this point it would be stupid of me not to recommend my PHP Design Patterns course that has the real-life practical examples, link is in the description. But if you cannot afford the course, there are so many good resources on the internet, you just need to put the time into it. And try to really understand and implement one pattern on multiple examples, and that will get you used to the, to the sort of new way of thinking. So the next time you come into the situation, you can actually recognize it, you can remember that pattern and start using it. I'm making a cheat sheet for most popular design patterns and it will be available soon on GitHub, so check out the description for the link. And that should cover most examples, but if it's still not finished, just Google and find some examples that you like online. And if you fail to implement some patterns from your first try, just go back to what you're comfortable with, finish the job and keep practicing more, it's not a big deal if you don't use them. But the easiest way to learn something new, uh, at least for me, is to try it on a smaller scale or on some of my uh, so-called pet projects where I can play how I want and I don't have deadlines and I don't have clients that need some expectations. And it's also a good idea to practice principles and patterns individually. So make some two hours project uh, and then focus on one principle. Take for example dependency injection or model view control or, or adapter or whatever and use two hours only on that and try to recognize something from your past projects where you could have used that particular pattern or a principle. And I bet you will find at least one thing that you wished you have used in your main project. And it might feel uncomfortable and uh, probably slow because it's difficult for us to change our habits, but trust me, very soon you will see the benefits. So just keep going with it, just keep doing it, because there is a reason why every serious project and programmer it uses design patterns, so you should as well. And you might break some functionality and then be frustrated. But remember, you basically have to break some eggs to make an omelet. Get it? So watch my video on how to use design patterns in real life project. Mm. Mm. Mm.